morning, everyone. Welcome to our celebration. Our opening song this morning from the Miss Black is number 174, We Are the Light of the World. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. 
receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Lord our God, help us to love you with all our hearts and to love all people as you love them. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
Lord be with you. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the side of a mountain and sat down. Jesus' disciples gathered around him and he taught them. God blesses those people who depend only on him. They belong to the kingdom of heaven. God blesses those people who grieve. They will find comfort. God blesses those people who are humble. The earth belongs to them. God blesses those people who want to obey him more than to eat or drink. They will be given what they want. God blesses those people who are merciful. They will be treated with mercy. God blesses those people whose hearts are pure. They will see him. God blesses those people who make peace. They will be called his children. God blesses those people who are treated badly for doing right. They belong to the kingdom of heaven. God will bless you when people insult you, mistreat you, and tell all kinds of evil lies about you because of me. Be happy and excited. You will have a great reward in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Each of us probably has a favorite picture of Jesus that's either displayed in our homes or perhaps even in our hearts. I wish I knew the number of portraits, pictures that have been drawn of Jesus Christ these past uh, 20 centuries. They would probably number in the millions, these images, these, these faces of Christ. Most of the time we see Jesus pictured as rather serious or rather somber. Sometimes he seems a little on the sad side or the lonely side. Sometimes Jesus is pictured as majestic. Sometimes he even appears angry. This past week I walked into Sister Cordata's office and I was struck by the picture of Jesus that hangs in her office over her desk. I guess I hadn't noticed it before. Because there Jesus is pictured laughing, smiling. And it's a rather unusual portrait of Christ. We don't often think of him as laughing or smiling, but I'm sure many times he did because he was fully human. Today, we have the good fortune of being shown a picture of Jesus that he himself has drawn for us. Today, the gospel gives us a self-portrait of Christ. Jesus gives us a description of himself that reveals more about him than any painter or any sculptor could possibly present. Today's readings are called the Beatitudes. And the Beatitudes are Jesus' self-portrait, the most personal description that we have of him in the Gospels. They are the timeless image of Christ. And these words of Jesus give us an image of him which is lasting. Today in the Beatitudes, we have an opportunity to truly recognize Jesus for who he really is. But as beautiful as the Beatitudes are, we know how difficult it is to accept these words of Jesus. We know how tough it is to accept this image of Jesus because it seems to go against everything our society or everything our culture uh, puts out there as being important. As much as we want to mirror the image of Jesus, we know that this particular one is not an easy one to assimilate. It's not an easy one to accept. Our culture and our society, and in particular, our advertising world, tells us this is how you can achieve a life of ease. This is how you can achieve a life of comfort. This is how you can be happy. This is how you can be content. And then they proceed to explain to us how essential it is for us to buy this or buy that, to own this or own that, or to look this particular way. On the other hand, we have Jesus, who stands before us today in the Gospels, and he gives us a different message. In the Beatitudes, Jesus tells us, this is how you can truly achieve peace. This is how you can achieve real contentment. And of course, the challenge before us this morning is, 
Which message do we heed? What advice uh, should we follow? There's always a continual tug of war going on, and we're in the middle of it. On the one hand, we have the media, our magazines, TV, movies, radio, plus the weight of popular opinion telling us how to achieve the good life. And then we have Christ. We have Christ and his Beatitudes giving us the prescription for happiness and contentment. The problem is that the advice Jesus gives us is diametrically opposed to the advice that everyone else gives us. Still, it takes great faith. It takes great faith to put our trust in Jesus. No matter what he says, his advice oftentimes goes against our selfish inclinations. Who can believe that the poor in spirit are truly blessed? Who can believe that the meek are better off than the violent? Who can believe that peacemakers are happier than war makers? Who of us can believe that those who show mercy fare better than those who seek revenge? Who can believe all this? We are the ones. We are the ones who are called to believe it. We're called to accept it. We're called to even embrace it. We cannot look away and somehow ignore the message of Christ the Beatitudes truly give us a picture of Jesus. And Jesus gives us something more than just a fleeting moment of happiness or contentment. As long as we allow Jesus to feed us through his church, through the sacraments, we are strengthened to do the work of God. Jesus is the most valuable, he is the most priceless reality that we can share with another person. And so if you care about your wife, if you care about your children, if you care about your husband, if you care about the people you work with, the people whose lives you touch this week, if you really care for them, nothing will help them as much as Jesus Christ. Our own discipleship is incomplete if we are not sharing Jesus with others. As I said at the beginning of Mass, today begins Catholic Schools Week. The theme for this week is Faith for a Brighter Future. Faith for a Brighter Future. And so today, we salute our principal, we salute the teachers and the staff who share their faith, who share their faith with the children of our school. Because they, in a sense, present every day, they present a picture of Jesus uh, to our young people. Within St. Mary's Academy, Religious values and religious faith uh, are nurtured. Catholic values integrated throughout our students' days gives them the tools necessary to make substantial contributions to the world in which they live. I want to thank all those who assist in any way in providing Catholic school education to our young people. Because assuredly, the future of our church the future of our society depends on the young people of our parish community. And so today we salute all those, all those people who make great sacrifices in making St. Mary's Academy what it is. Can you think of anything that our young people need more than they need Catholic values, gospel values, the Catholic values that are uh, nurtured at St. Mary's Academy? Even our young people themselves see the value of what is taught uh, to them at St. Mary's. This past week, the school children at St. Mary's had an opportunity to write essays, and they had an opportunity to put in writing some of the things that they like about being a student at St. Mary's Academy. And I want to quote just from three of them. Caitlin Langer writes, what I like about St. Mary's Academy is that we learn about God. Uh, we have religion books, and we know about God at St. Mary's Academy. Colby Langlois writes, We get to talk about important things at St. Mary's Academy. We get to talk about important religions. We get a good education, but we can talk about God at school. And then finally, Danielle Bullris writes, I think my school is special 
Well, because we have the best teachers ever. We have the smartest teachers and principal too. I like our school because of my friends. I have the best friends that I could ever have in the whole entire world. And I have the best teacher also. I couldn't ask for anything better. The best thing I like about my friends is that the first time I met them, they were so nice to me. And ever since, we've had so much fun together. But the most important thing I like about St. Mary's is that I get to learn more about Jesus with a big ex exclamation point at the, at the end. Today, we come together to salute our school. We come together to begin Catholic Schools Week. Our young people need to have others draw pictures of Jesus for them. Our faculty, our volunteers, our staff at St. Mary's Academy each day attempt to present their students with an image or a picture of Jesus. They share their faith with them. And so today, as we begin Catholic Schools Week, we salute them, we thank them, we thank them for all the sacrifices they made in sharing their faith with our ch children or drawing a picture of Christ for them. May the Lord give you his peace. Speech 
may all leaders of government, both at home and abroad, work to ensure justice for all, and honesty in carrying out their duty. We pray the Lord. The Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. The Lord is gracious and merciful and just. May all those who teach us lead us by word and example to imitate God's generosity and justice. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. May we learn to embrace the cross out of love for others and thus preach the good news by our lives. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. May all those who support our school to prayer, voluntary, and financial support live always in God's holy light. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. The Lord said, share your bread with the hungry, shelter the homeless, clothe, clothe the naked. May we learn to work for justice and care for the needy in our midst. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord promises that light will rise for us in the darkness. May all of those who experience the darkness of grief because of the death of a loved one be consoled by God's faithfulness. We pray to the Lord. We also pray for those who are seriously sick in a special way today. We remember Cecile McCarthy, we pray to the Lord. And those two who have died, in a special way we remember uh, Marina Lavoie, who died yesterday. In repose of her soul, we pray to the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for all of your gifts, especially the gift of your children. We ask your blessings upon us and upon our school, for we pray in Jesus' name, amen.
Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Free of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, that our sacrifice here may be pleasing and acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, be pleased with the gifts we bring to your altar, and make them the sacrament of our salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus our Lord. By his birth we are reborn. In his suffering we are freed from sin. By his rising from the dead we rise to everlasting life. In his return to you in glory we enter into your heavenly kingdom. And so we join the angels and the saints as they sing their unending hymn of praise.
God our Father, we remember with joy all that Jesus did to save us. And in this holy sacrifice which he gave as a gift to his church, we remember his death and resurrection. Father in heaven, accept us together with your beloved Son. He willingly died for us, but you raised him to life again. Jesus now lives with you in glory, but he is also here on earth among us. One day he will come in glory, and in his kingdom there will be no more suffering, no more tears, no more sadness. Father in heaven, you have called us to receive the body and the blood of Christ at this table, and to be filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit. Through this sacred meal, give us strength to please you more and more. Lord our God, remember John Paul, our Pope, Paul, our Bishop, and all other bishops. Help all who follow Jesus to work for peace and to bring happiness to others. Finally, bring us all at last, together with Mary, the Mother of God, and all the saints, to live with you and to be one with Christ in heaven. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Jesus gave us when he prayed.
Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, happy are those invited to his table. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall.